An electromagnet is an object where you are using electricity to make magnetism, to make that object into a magnet. Just like you have a permanent magnet, an object that is a magnet, that can attract other things that are magnetic but not magnets, you can make an electromagnet which will turn this into a magnet for as long as you're applying the current, and then it will become inert again once you're not. Now I've mentioned that there are magnets and then there are magnetic materials. A magnet is a magnetic material that has been aligned internally. I've done a video on this, so I'm not going to go over it again. But a magnetic material is something that can be a magnet. A magnet, a permanent magnet, is something that is a magnetic material and has been made into a magnet. A conductor like copper is generally not going to be a magnetic material, but it's the same mechanism. Again, go watch the electromagnetism video, but it's basically those wiggly electrons. A moving electric field is a magnetic field. So in all those cases, it's the electrons doing it. But in a magnet, the electrons are permanently aligned. In an electromagnet, they are aligned by electricity. It's the same thing. It's electrons that are aligned to make a magnetic field to cooperate to do that, but it's a different mechanism. One is physical, well, one is, one is motion physical, and the other is caused by voltage. To make an electromagnet of your own, you basically just make a wire coil and put voltage across it, and you're done. It's all about the strength. If you just have a wire, if you just have a wire and you put a voltage across it, you have an electromagnet. But it's so incredibly weak and useless, that's not going to do anything. In the electromagnetism video, I went over why a coil of wire is a stronger electromagnet. Go watch that video for the geometry of it. But basically, your coil of wire increases the strength until it's actually doing something useful at the same voltage and current. In other words, at the same power. Now, what kind of wire do you use? This funky red wire I have, and then over here I have it covered in electrical tape. You use something called magnet wire. I'll give you one good guess why it got its name. But basically, it's all about distance. We want to have the coil of wire packed as tightly as possible, as thinly as possible, because inverse square, I did a video on inverse square. The further apart these are, the further away they are, the weaker everything is. So if we can pack them in real tight, then we'll get a stronger electromagnet. This is insulated wire. This is just regular, is it copper? I don't know, it's copper or tin or something. But in any case, it's a conductor and it is insulated, but not with rubber or latex or anything, it's lacquered. There is a very, very thin layer of lacquer, paint, however you wanna look at it, on the wire, just enough, literally within molecules, just enough to make sure that it doesn't conduct to itself, that it doesn't short out, and no more. So you can pack them in as tightly as possible. Now, how do you get the lacquer off? That's easy. Sandpaper. You just get yourself some nice sandpaper. I use this for everything. It's uh, P220 from 3M. It says AO2 on it. I have no idea what grit this is. I'm assuming P220 is a grit. But basically, some nice fine sandpaper. I use it for, for wood, for metal, for getting rust off things. It's, it's a nice general purpose grit. And I specifically bought a magnet wire. Hopefully you can see, yes. See this? Okay, so it is copper. I forgot. So it's copper colored here. And then down here it's red. You just take the sandpaper and you sand off the lacquer on this part. You know, leave yourself a lot of slack and sand it off and then you can trim. Easy enough. And I specifically chose a red magnet wire because then I can see the color underneath. You can see the metal as you get the lacquer off so you know when you're done. Otherwise you have to do a conductivity check, continuity check, whatever. Just make sure it's got a nice colored lacquer so you can tell when it's off. And that's all you do. You just sand it right off and you've got the bare wire underneath. Now why do I cover it with electrical tape? Uh, partly because it's only lacquered, so if I bump this against something it might scrape off the lacquer and cause a problem. But also because I'm not using any sort of industrial process to do this. I did it all by hand. So, you know, it's, it's trying to come apart all the time, and I had to do shenanigans to get it nice and tight, so I just taped it down so it'd be tight. It doesn't matter. Magnetism, here's the thing. Magnetism is not blocked by anything. As far as I know, there is nothing at all whatsoever in the universe that we have discovered that can block a magnetic field. You, know, you can use something like a Faraday cage to redirect it, to basically shunt it around you, but you can't block it. So this this tape, you could you could put a lead brick in between, it wouldn't matter. So this is this is just for convenience. So what do we coil 
the wire around. What are the properties of a good electromagnet? So first of all, remember your inverse square. I have here two electromagnets, two solenoids that I have made. One of them is larger. It's plastic with air. It's just a hollow tube, plastic with air, in a squarish shape, and it's larger around. The other one, which is about the same length, the other one is much narrower, and it has a solid core of iron, steel, whatever this is, I assume it's just regular steel, as a core, and it's cylindrical, much narrower. So there's much more wire here. See, they're about the same length, which means they have about the same number of turns, circles of wire, loops of wire. But there's more wire because this one's bigger. But that doesn't matter. First of all, remember, again, look at the electromagnetic video, if you don't remember, but basically, when you have this loop, you have your electric field lines kind of go out and shoost out this way and then come around and go back in. So you've got like electric field lines going through the center in one direction and then down the outside in the other. So we can immediately see that the rectangular one, the square one, is going to be worse than the circular one because some of the bits of coil are further from the center because the action is in the center. It's, it's through the center and then around the outside and through the center and it cooperates that way. So if you have it further from the center, it's not cooperating as well and it's gonna be weaker overall because on the corners, it's gonna be further from the center than on the flat sides. So you want it to be a circular core so the whole thing is a cylinder. Second, a smaller diameter is good now, this is just for electromagnets. There are other factors at play with other devices such as transformers, but for an electromagnet, when you just want a magnet, a smaller diameter is better because, again, closer to the center, everything is more focused in there. It's closer together. It's cooperating better. But the most important thing is that your core be not a magnet, but a magnetic material. You don't want it to be a magnet because you're making a magnet. That's going to goof everything up. But you want it to be a magnetic material. Now, magnetic flux is a little tricky concept. You got your Webers and your Teslas. Magnetic flux density and induction and so forth. But basically, the intuitive explanation is, you know how if you have a magnet and a magnetic material, so magnetic materials that are not attracting each other, but are attracted by a magnet, the magnet is creating, it's, it's basically turning the non-permanent magnet into a permanent magnet temporarily. It's a temporary permanent magnet. It's magnetizing it so that everything in the regular magnetic material is lined up just like it is in the permanent magnet. But the magnetic field is not strong enough to just lock everything in place to physically force the atoms to rearrange, the molecules to rearrange, to stay in the arrangement that the magnetic is putting it in. It's only temporary. The same thing happens when you have your electron flow creating a magnetic field around this core. It turns the core into a magnet and the whole thing is already a magnet so you basically get a solid cord magnet when you have a hollow core the only magnetism going on is just from the wire itself and it's just going through the air and it's not as focused and condensed adding the magnetic material as a core does not increase the power the power is how much electricity you're putting across it all it does is make it more effective because it it focuses the magnetic field through here because the magnetic field is magnetizing the core and that is making it more effective as a magnet and that's basically it get yourself a little piece of steel such as a nail it's very common get yourself a nice masonry nail that doesn't have any weirdness about it get yourself a nail that a magnet attracts to so it has to be a magnetic material steel iron are great and then wrap your wire around the nail you have an electromagnet that's all you do this is just a a steel bar i got from the hardware store for like a dollar it's a real long one i cut it short and this is just a piece of plastic i had lying around so now let me actually demonstrate so i'm going to turn my power supply on for safety it's set at zero volts and zero amps and i'm just going to put the voltage at five we're not going to get anywhere near five volts that's just so it has something now as a safety note i am going to hook my power supply directly up to my electromagnet 
my solenoid. I'm not going to use resistors or anything because this has voltage and current control specifically. I can limit both. If you are just trying to do something like hook this up to a battery, be careful because a battery does have internal resistance. So you're not going to get a straight powerful short circuit, but internal resistance still will let the battery operate at a rate enough to heat it up. If you leave it for long enough, your battery will explode. Hear those stories about a person who has a battery and some coins in their pocket and it catches fire? That's why, because it was creating a circuit. I did a video about how to change the fuse in a multimeter. I'll give you one guess as to why I ended up doing that video. But this has inbuilt limitations. So I have the power supply and I can confirm it's working. So if I turn the current to just 10 milliamps, it'll go up to five volts and it's gonna put no current through because it's limiting the voltage. If I short it, it goes to 10 milliamps and zero volts because there's basically no resistance. That's how the limit works. So let me turn the current back down to zero and I'll just put the power supply in my breadboard. There's no positive and negative, it doesn't matter. So now I just have two little alligator clips and let me get one of my electromagnets. I'm going to use the better one first, the one that has a steel core. So I'll just alligator clip one and the other and then I'll plug it into the power. So right now, the electromagnet is not picking up the nail, it's not doing anything. It has no current going through it. So I'll turn the current up to one milliamp. And again, we're at zero volts and nothing's happening because it's taking microvolts, possibly nanovolts, but probably microvolts to do one milliamp here. See, if I unplug the power, it goes up to five volts, plug it back in, it goes down. So it's limiting, it is putting out power. So one millivamp is not enough. Let's try 10 milliamps. The 10 milliamps, still nothing happening. Now I'd like to point out this is a heavy nail, relatively speaking. It's a nice masonry nail. So it's gonna take some power. So let's go up to 100 milliamps. Now we actually can see the voltage. It's taking approximately 0.06 volts. So I guess 60 millivolts to give us 100 milliamps. You can see there's no resistance. So now still nothing, but nothing's heating up. Everything's good. So let's start turning it up more. Let's do half an amp. Half an amp, only 290-ish millivolts to do. Does half an amp do anything? It does. It's not strong. Let me do it at the side angle. If I do the tip right here, should be able to see it starts to lift just barely, comes up a teeny tiny bit, and then puts it back down because it's just not strong enough. If I try to do the other side, it can't. It's just not strong enough. But just the tip, it can just a teeny tiny bit lift it before it drops back down. So let's give it some more power. Let's go to 800 milliamps. We're up to half a volt. And now, oh, it can hold the tip at an angle and it can even pick up the nail, but it can't hold it very well. If I try to pick up the other end, it's not picking up. It's, it's nudging it a little bit. It'll pick it up a little bit and then it'll fall down. But the tip end, because it's not as heavy, it can just barely pick it up by the tip and let go. And here we go. Now, check this out. Here's an illustration of magnetic flux. So the nail has a flat side and a tip force per unit area. I should do a video about this later on, but I did a little bit in my inverse square video about distributing force per unit area. This is not the same thing because we're not talking about getting further away, but the same thing, like if you have a hydraulic press, using a smaller head will give you more force. I'll do a video on magnetic flux at some other time, but if I try to pick it up by the head, it won't do it. If I try to pick it up by the tip, it will because it's applying all the force to a smaller area so there's more force instead of like this. But I want a stronger one. So let's turn it up to a whole amp, one whole amp. And you can tell my power supply is not happy. It's turned on a cooling fan. This can handle, I think up to five amps, I wanna say. But just pay attention, make sure this is not warming up or anything. But now it's gotten a bit stronger. It can pick it up a little bit from the middle. See, it can pick up the nail from the middle and then it can pick it up from the flat side now. If I do it from the tip side, it can do it pretty well. It'll still not be too strong if I shake it, but let's turn it up to an amp and a half. So this is only one volt. It's almost a volt and it's one and a half amps. So that is about 1.5 watts. So that's a decent amount of power. This is not warming up though. If I feel the wire, if I feel the clamp, none of it's warming up. It's all right, so it's not more than my wires can handle, but now we have quite a decent strength magnet. I have to shake it pretty well to get it to fall off, and it's holding it nice and securely. And if I just turn the current all the way down, the nail falls right off. 
There you go. Let me turn everything back to zero for safety. And let me turn it back on because I forgot the other half of my demonstration. So let me turn it back to where it was. Let me go back to five volt limit. And I had it at 1.5 amps. So here's 1.5 amps and it's picking up the nail just fine. So now I'm going to unplug this and my power supply goes to five volt zero amps because it's got an open circuit now. So now I'm going to connect to the other electromagnet, the crappy one. So once again, it's the same length but it's wider and it's hollow cord and it's not round. It's got everything going against it. So now let me hook this up to the power and let's see what we get. So I'll just plug it right in to the positive and negative. Now check it out, 1.5 amps, but now it's 1.71 volts. It's needing more volts, more power for the same current. Let me check and make sure nothing's heating up because we got a couple watts now. Seems to be good so far. So to get the same current through, it's taking more power. It's having to work harder. And is it going to pick up the nail? No, it's not doing anything. It's not doing a single blessed thing. I try to put the nail, try to pick it up this way, that way. None of it. Absolute junk. Absolute junk. Now I'll turn it off. Nothing to it. Grab yourself a nice steel rod. It, it was real cheap. It cost me like a dollar and some cents. If you don't have a way to cut it, then... Just use a nail. You can get a little box of nails. I'm sure you'll have some use for nails or find a nail anywhere. You can use a screw, but the threads are annoying. So that's why we use a nail. Nice steel nail, iron or steel. Get yourself some magnet wire. I got this off of Amazon. It was like 25 bucks. It's a huge one. There are smaller ones. I've already made like five solenoids and this is not even half used. So this is going to last me my entire life. Just get yourself some magnet wire and a little sandpaper. Leave yourself a huge amount of slack, just, just a giant wire off the end, like, you know, a foot long or a little less, maybe not that much, but leave yourself just a huge amount of slack and then start wrapping it. And you can twist it in your lap or whatever technique you discover to wrap. And at the beginning, don't worry about making it tight, just wrap it. And then once you get a few coils, then kind of twist and tighten it a little bit and then get some more coils, more coils and Find a way to secure the end. You can use a clip, you can tape it down, you can do something. For the plastic, since it was hollow, I just shoved the wire down the hole, but as we've seen, hollow is bad. So just figure out some tricky way to hold it and just wrap, 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 wrap. Get yourself some slack on the other end. Electrical tape, tape it down, sand off the conductors, electromagnet. Nice solenoid, and that'll do you. So while you go put on some Biggie Smalls to get in the mood to wrap some wire, I'll be seeing you.